Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the session Inclusivity in College Strategies for Supporting Diverse Learners. Um, I'm very happy to see that you came to the session. Please, somebody can, can somebody please let me know in chat that you can see my screen and you can hear me well. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much to uh, everybody who helping me out with this. Okay, so let's begin. So this is our session today and um, uh, let's go here. A um, uh, couple of words about me, your presenter for today. My name is Natalia Kuraiva and I'm an instructional designer at Teaching and Learning with Technology at Radcliffe University. And today I will be sharing with you some of my um, teaching, previous teaching experience, and uh, also designing experience. So let's chat. Let's begin uh, to get to know each other just uh, a little bit. If you don't mind, please use chat to introduce yourself briefly and share what school are you from and what are your role. Um, sometimes we have uh, instructors, uh, faculty members, or sometimes instructional designers. So if you can briefly just mention a couple of words about you. That would be great. This way we can see who is present today and we can communicate with each other. All right. We have instructional designer. Let me start from the beginning. We have then instructional designer, Penn State. Uh, welcome. Uh, Abby is a learning technologist, product manager. Rachel is. Okay. We have Holly from instructional technology consultant. Okay, very good. So mostly we have uh, instructional designers or, or people who are involved in developing content and helping uh, faculty members to uh, create their courses. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Uh, keep posting and we will uh, continue taking a look at the chat. Uh, also, I want to mention that if you like to interrupt me with the question or you have um, you have some thoughts, please feel free to use chat. I will be stopping by during the presentation and, and uh, checking with you via this wonderful tool. Uh, thank you everybody who posted and once again, uh, welcome to this presentation. So what we're going to do, uh, let's, uh, let's start with session objectives. This is what I'm hoping that we will um, achieve today. We will discuss the main principles of Universal Design for Learning, UDL, and also the uh, main principles of differentiated instruction, DI. And uh, we will discuss ways to integrate them into college teaching. We also will explore campus features and external tools for integrating uh, differentiated instruction by examining, uh, examining example of one project. And we will share your teaching experiences. I hope you will do that. And we will uh, spend some time brainstorming uh, UDL and DI related ideas, uh, how you can integrate them into your courses. So, um, um, who is taking your course? Um, we, we never know. Like, even so, you work with, you, with your faculty members. Who is taking their courses? We might not be completely aware of what kind of populations of students we are serving. So let's talk about diversity for a minute. It's such a common uh, term right now. It's such a popular term, but what does it really mean? I'll, sh I'll share a little bit about uh, Radkas University and particularly about campus in New Brunswick. You can see this uh, chart and you can um, see how diverse we are. Radcliffe University is uh, it's a kind of very diverse uh, campus uh, across all the factors, racial, geographic, gender, age. So we actually have 83 score out of 100. And this chart is represented compared to uh, all other uh, you know, national average, and you see uh, a green, green lines. This is for Radcliffe University. So I was just... Uh, I can assume that uh, your uh, courses and your school also are very uh, diverse. Sometimes we can actually see diversity, but very often we cannot. And this is very important to remember that even when we think that, oh, my students are pretty much uh, similar background, same age, all you know, 18 years old, right after, out of school, I can just teach them certain way. We should not assume that because a lot of uh, diversity we cannot see, right? For example, we may guess age and race, 
but we don't know the marital status. We might not know the level of education. We might not know the mental ability, the uh, physical ability, economic status, uh, prior experiences. Do they have disabilities? What kind of skills and interests do they do they bring to the uh, to this uh, to this course? What their confidence level? Uh, how um, how they're willing? How much effort they're willing to put? So there's a variety of factors that could influence how people are the same and how they're also different. And we have to kind of uh, respect all these differences uh, as we try to reach and teach all students, or as we try to set up courses for the faculty to reach and teach all the students. So I'm just curious if you can jot down a couple of uh, thoughts about how diverse is your student population? Is it changing currently? Like I hear, um, for example, that a lot of uh, professors explain that uh, we more because of the COVID and we had to go online. So the population also changing. Some maybe younger students choose to skip a year and some older students or students with experience decided to take a, take a jump and take a course online because they need to update the uh, skill set. Maybe they trying to. Um, okay, Annette is sharing that less international students due to COVID. Uh, absolutely, and you have to consider that, right? Maybe if you had some exercise or learning activity for students uh, with international background, maybe you need to update that in your courses. Okay, well, I hope you will continue sharing. Meanwhile, we will be moving on. We have another person sharing uh, TM sharing that disability is still often seen as a outliner in diversity effort, absolutely. And this is so close to my heart. I'm very passionate about offering uh, students with various disability uh, equal opportunities because education is a really, really key to, to success in, in life. That's my belief. And people with disability more and more, they need to uh, get a higher level of education to even be able to get a job, never mind to, um, you know, job march keep changing, uh, not everybody is able, we have much less uh, work available on a, uh, you know, a, a lower education level. So it's very important that we offer opportunity to all students, including students with disability. So how we go about uh, reaching and teaching all these diverse learners? Uh, universal design for learning gives us an excellent framework and also differentiated uh, instructions. So let's uh, uh, talk about the um, theory just for one minute. So theoretical framework, uh, I would say it starts somewhere with uh, Vygotsky theory of construction, uh, constructionism. Uh, you probably familiar with zones of prox uh, proximal development, ZDP. And he's the one who kind of brought to our attention that we have to consider learners' ability, learners' readiness, and their specific characteristic if we're um, trying to successfully reach and teach our students. Well, this is only my one opportunity I can brag a little bit uh, because um, not often we talk about the Vagatsky. Uh, and uh, my um, proud point is that I actually graduated from the uh, Institute uh, um, of Ped Pedagogical University that Vygotsky used to be a professor at in Moscow. So, uh, it, uh, so it's a uh, you know his theory of uh, uh, ZDP is uh, very special to me for that reason as well. Okay, um, you, um, uh, moving forward now we also extension of that is Universal Design for Learning (UDL). And if you were lucky enough to uh, attend the session yesterday. Uh, presented by my wonderful colleague Dina, and uh, she explained different um, uh, main principles. She used the uh, chart uh, guidelines for UDL. And if you missed the session, this is the link that I uh, strongly recommend you, uh, you know, jot down and visit where you can see wonderful chart of uh, guidelines for UDL. And this way you can apply those main principles as well. But meanwhile, just quick mentioning uh, universal design for learning includes multiple means of representations, how you present material, it could be by text, by images, by video, uh, by variety of means that uh, anybody can have access to that. Multiple means of action and expression, meaning that uh, you will provide a variety of uh, learning activities and, and projects and assessments and um, 
so all students can be comfortable using uh, some of those means of um, action uh, to learn and master the material. And finally, multiple means of engagement, same idea, you have to provide a variety of ways for them to engage with the content, engage with, engage with a faculty member and engage with peers to learn uh, material and uh, apply what they learn to, to take it further. And let's uh, now we're coming to, um, now we're coming to uh, a differentiated instruction, and I won't bring up the name of Carol and Tom Tomlinson, who is kind of expert and guru in uh, DI. And I won't briefly mention uh, main elements of the uh, differentiated instruction kind of theory or framework. So again, um, if you, you can just Google differentiated instruction and you will be able to see a variety of resources. I just mentioning here one of them. Uh, in uh, in Edutopia, you can uh, see explanation of various components of uh, DI. But um, let's talk about them a little bit here. So this is the chart I put together uh, while I was working on one of the projects. And this is the components of differentiated instructions and how we can really uh, use that. Content, what we are teaching, what we want to teach our students, what we have to put in um, our L uh, LMS. Uh, process is how we teach, what kind of learning activities do we provide the lecture, do we provide the uh, outline, do we provide the slides, do we want them to um, you know, get engaged in certain activities, group work, individual work, how are we going to teach the material, the process of teaching. Finally, product is how students demonstrate content mastery. So what are they going to show us or provide at the end of the activity or at the end of the course? So we can see that students actually mastered the content that we uh, set out to teach them. Then we have another element, effect. How students connect their thinking and feelings to, um, to the content. How are we uh, taking advantage of um, uh, the richness of the diversity of our students and how we can really uh, put, um, you know, ap uh, appeal to their feelings in terms of how we can help them to relate uh, content we're teaching, um, you know, to, to, to what they already know, to their background and uh, have them really buy into uh, the learning and, and be invested. And finally, learning environment, another important uh, element of this uh, uh, framework of DI. Learning environment means, uh, do we teach face-to-face? -face? Do we teach online? Do we, do we really have flexible grouping? Do, do we design um, more individual work or do we give them opportunity to work with one peer, with many peers? A uh, variety of things that we can do to really adjust and offer variety um, of um, learning environment uh, opportunities for students. But what I want to uh, highlight here on this chart is that student is in the center. So it's a center, a student centering approach to teaching. We have to consider their readiness level. We have to consider their interest. We have to consider their learning profile, their ability, disability, all of those things that we mentioned in previ uh, previous slides uh, when we discuss how diverse students can be and what we can and cannot see about it. So some other uh, continuation of this slide, just going about our content and process, all the elements that we just discussed, and I'm not going to read it. I'll give you like a half a second. Let me put this uh, away so you can see the screen, right? Uh, maybe like that, or maybe like that altogether. So uh, just take a quick look. We already went over that. I'm not gonna stop for a lot here for a long time. So next one, product and authentic assessment. Um, and this is very important because um, a product, meaning that students will produce something that they created. It's very important to uh, give them opportunity uh, for authentic products. So they will demonstrate what they have come to know, understand, and be able to do after the, an extended period of learning, like at the end of the course. The reason I'm starting here, because uh, my second part of this presentation is actually examining and reviewing one of the projects that was created to provide such opportunity uh, of authentic assessment. And learning environment, we talked about that briefly. So here's some more notes on that. And finally, uh, let's, let's consider, wh why should we consider 
using the eye in the college classroom? Is it even appropriate? Often you see the information and article and material about the eye, and it's all about K through 12. Uh, but I have to tell you that it is even more important to provide differentiated instruction for students at college level. First of all, diversity uh, just continues to grow. It doesn't go well away because life and educational experiences and experience in life in general uh, bring adult students are even more diverse than K through 12 students. Also differentiated instruction is a student centered and holistic approach uh, and that help us to engage learners and really uh, make them passionate about the learning and make them passionate about the content that you are teaching them or that you setting uh, helping your uh, professors to set up courses to teach. So it's very, it's, it's very, even more important. Um, it's um, providing authentic assessment, differentiating it will also promote academic honestly, and we will have to give up those, um, you know, um, you know, we will have to kind of step away from um, the thought that we have to monitor students while they're taking exam because exam is all the same and we have to be careful that uh, they don't copy the questions that you're planning to reuse for the next semester. So all of that kind of goes away. It falls, falls away just like uh, autumn leaves because authentic assessment will really provide the opportunity for them to demonstrate what they learn, but also be involved in that in some real way. Uh, DI also includes a learner-centered uh, constructivist model that will meet the needs of all learners at a variety of level and make uh, learning meaningful in general. So DI at college level is stays relevant and actually becomes even more important. This is the article and study on DI at college level. You can look it up if, you, uh, if you're interested for further you know, reading, but I just wanna tell you main highlights about, from this study that differentiated instruction methods for the DI group showed some significant achievement in students' academic learning compared to the non-differentiated instruction group. So they compare it to different groups and this was the result. And I would expect that that absolutely makes sense completely. And engagement, same idea. So achievement is important to us, but also how engaged students are. And so in this case, the study shows that students in the I group appreciated choice, more freedom and considerations of their learning styles. They felt it improved their learning of the material. Well, of course, of course, why wouldn't that be? Because it's student-centered. Um, so how to the I in college? Uh, that is a good question because it's not easy, but it's not easy even in K through 12 uh, level. But the key is here is to start small, to start somewhere and remember, that it's a process, it's a process. You can always reflect and make changes and you can always add additional, uh, additional way to differentiate. You don't have to do it all at once. So consider again, this factor when you start thinking about differentiating, you can start at least maybe with one assignment or maybe with just some learning activities. And um, well, this is one of my favorite quotes. So I wanna share it. I love quotes and this one says, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. And I want kind of uh, remind you with this quote that um, as you teach course, course or as you're setting up your course for somebody else to teach, remember, you can go back to that, reflect what's happened uh, during your first uh, time you taught it or second time and you, and you always can improve it by reflecting and making it ongoing process. And this is to take away from this slide, reflect, and remember, it's a process. So please don't get overwhelmed with um, developing differentiated, authentic assignments. So this is just very quick reminder that we can use variety of tools to do that. Uh, for example, instead of quiz or exam, why not to ask your students to develop an infographic? And there's uh, some tools. I'm not going to go into any of that because it's not the point for this presentation, but information is available. You can ask them to cre create a website. Uh, again, tools are available. Uh, I love uh, um, students uh, working on concept map, could be great group exercise. They can develop that graphical organizer to help them to really um, um, highlight and understand the connection between different concepts, really uh, be able to um, connect it to the previous learned concepts and things like that. Uh, there's the tools available. Uh, block, some people prefer that. 
uh, record the video, well, why not? Especially for uh, students with um, experience uh, creating video, watching video, you see how popular YouTube and TikTok is. Students really living are using multimedia. So why not to bring it into your uh, course and, and make it part of uh, their assignment? Uh, I also enjoyed working with Sway when uh, groups of students can collaborate to develop multimedia projects. Uh, very easy and a great way to present um, their product uh, later on to the rest of the class. So again, this is just a taste of variety of tools you can use to create differentiated uh, authentic assessment. Now I'm going to the main part of the presentation and really want to share with you. Uh, I want to share with you uh, how uh, I went about developing such assignment and how um, um, how I manage that. And I think it really gives you um, a little bit of an easier way to start with that. So I'm going to go to my demo course. And please keep in mind that this is just a demo course. It's not fully developed, uh, you know, course. So don't expect to see everything uh, perfect. But uh, here's my demo course. And I will be talking about one specific assignment that um, actually was the project for the whole course. I used to be um, a, a assistant professor and I taught a special education to prospective teachers and that's how this project came about. But I was very mindful about making it very, very um, meaningful for students and differentiated so they actually can get a good experience from doing that and also produce something that is useful to them in the future. So before I go into the project, I want to show, um, show with you a couple of um, uh, tools I used that I uh, put together myself. And I will also want to share a hand, handout that you can uh, use as I'm, uh, as I'm uh, going along. I wonder if I can put that in, can I upload it in chat? Uh, yes, I can. So let me just do that for you really fast. And then uh, you, you will be able to, um, to have it available. Mm. Let's see. Okay, no, I cannot do it that way yet. I will have to put it in a different way. Okay, I'll work on that in a minute. Let me just uh, continue on. So, uh, so one of the things that I recommend with a larger project and um, a differentiated project is start very early. In fact, uh, in this case, I start at the module one and you will say, wow, we're not quite ready to assign final project in module one. And I would argue with you that, yes, it actually would be very useful to do because students would like to know what is ahead of them, what kind of work they would be required to do and what would be timeline and how we can organize that. So let's take a look at this um, initial overview. This cannot be very detailed because details will come at each, uh, each stage. But uh, this particular uh, overview just explain, like I put video together explaining uh, the project in general, I'm not going to play, but I want to show you briefly uh, what can be done to let students know in advance, what does it mean? This particular project is going throughout the course, it's 60% of the course grade. So it's a lot of pressure, it's important. The, the variety of components will go into the project. So. Uh, you let them know what is the purpose of the project. Uh, in this case, it's research and selected issue and promising practices and education of students with mild and moderate disabilities. So uh, students will be able to select their own issue, differentiation. They will be able to research uh, promising practices. They would be able to choose a variety of things what they do with this project. So I explained them goals. I explained them mandatory requirements of the content uh, uh, of this project. They, it will be research-based components, such as um, they will have to use peer-reviewed articles and uh, file cre five credible web resources. They will have uh, field-based component. They will interview uh, teacher parents or school specialists uh, and observe their work. And finally, they will have a reflection component. So all of this will be requirement and all of this will be graded separately. And that's how the 60% of the uh, course uh, will come uh, together. So uh, here's some choices for students to select topics. And of course, I realized that this is just uh, example and on particular subject area and your, um, your subject areas or the faculty members working you're working with would be very different. But this is just the flow and example and structure for developing DI um, project at college level. 
So uh, in this case, uh, I provided some examples for, for students to choose from. They can, they can choose this type of uh, topics. They can educating students with learning disabilities in inclusive class ballroom, providing a planning for successful transition, that's for after high school, collaboration, how the um, all specialists involved in, in special education have to work together. Um, educational intervention for students with a specific uh, um, disorder or disability uh, or emotional behavioral disorders in classrooms, so they can choose their topics. This is just examples. And they tell them that they will select their own issue or topic that they're passionate about. And this was um, taught to the graduate course for students, for students who were already uh, teachers and who already had their own classroom or work with students with disabilities. So they already had either students that the specific disabilities such as autism or attention deficit disorder, and they could select those topics and that would be relevant to their work. Again, you see how I'm trying to bring their experience and their uh, current uh, relevant uh, factor that would they can relate to it because it would be uh, directly uh, connected to their work. They also can choose audience um, for their project because the final project would be you know, a few different things, but also presentations, some kind of product that they will create. And they can choose who their audience, that's another choice they can uh, figure out. Are they prefer to develop maybe webinar to, for the parents or maybe uh, record series of short, um, short advice to the parents? Or maybe they present uh, PD develop, you know, uh, um, professional development uh, session for their colleagues. Or maybe they want to discuss some topic for students. Uh, for middle or high school, or maybe they have their own audience. Um, <clears throat> I had students suggested that they present their, you know, community for people who involved at church because they had some some group for students with disability at their church, and so they wanted to share uh, those type of experience uh, with those type of um, audience. And now students also can select tra tra traditional research paper or they can select video clips, they can select webinar, they can select presentation with notes and pamphlet, or they can su suggest their own format. And one student was very creative and he actually developed uh, uh, like a, a comic, uh, comic uh, strip for students, which was kind of very interesting and unusual and, and, and very successful actually. They can also select variety of the technology that they can use. And of course, keep in mind, you need to be prepared to support them as they're choosing their um, technology. And at least you don't have to be expert in it, but at least you will have to research it and provide them with resources where they can find information or uh, have uh, tutorials available and things like that. Uh, they also can choose different level of collaboration, how they work on their project. They could decide that they want to work in small group uh, of three people and uh, choose one uh, topic that uh, would be relevant to them. I had some students who work in the same district and they chose to do that. And they can just work with one partner. Honestly, um, um, uh, my working with partner, one of my favorite format, because you really uh, don't have the, um, you know, um, challenges of uh, group dynamic and uh, people work together, it's easy, easier to coordinate, uh, easier to just arrange uh, meetings with one, one partner. You know that both people participating equally because it's just only two of them. I love working with partner and I love give uh, opportunity in my courses to work uh, with one partner, as well as they can choose individual. And again, we want to respect those differences in people and their comfort level. Um, I won't stretch them, but I also want them to be comfortable enough to learn uh, and uh, in the format that they prefer. So, because it's just an overview in the first module, I briefly explained them um, how, uh, how the project will be uh, structured throughout the whole course. They will be selecting topic right away, then they will do the sources. I explain them what's, uh, what kind of stages will have to take place. Re they start research, they also allocate and schedule uh, components for the field research, then they select format for the final presentation, audience and technology. I will provide them with all of these things as time will come, but I want to mention that at the beginning so they know what to expect. And I also let them know that they will re receive more detailed instructions and rubric for each of the stage. So I also give them this project timeline. And this is something I want to uh, share with you uh, about the timelines. So timeline I give to students is right here. 
I want them to be able to see what, how their workload will be distributed throughout the course and what they can do to manage it well. So providing them with this simple organizer help them to see when to expect uh, and what is coming. This is just week one, week two, week three, and they know that on uh, week uh, two, they will be expected to choose the topic. Uh, on week um, five, they uh, expected to submit a b and i have it right here number th uh, three the, the a b means annotated bibliography and i put them information that they will be uh, graded for this separate components and then th we have other components but they don't get those grades they will uh, submit final grade and receive a uh, grade and then they also will share it with the rest of the class so they can clearly see which week they need to prepare to what and here's my secret for success. I also created similar, uh, similar um, timeline for instructor that I was able to use to help myself. Because as you know, managing, managing a large project and managing it throughout the whole semester could be challenging. Uh, because just like most of us, I like to do things uh, last minute, although I always try to avoid that. Um, but uh, this type of um, organizer helped me as well, because uh, this is what is important for students. This is their timeline, and this is my timeline as an instructor. So what do I have to do every week? I have to give them project overview. I have to assign the topic, uh, or at least explain them uh, how they're going to select the topic. In this case, I'm going to assign them annotated bibliography and assign how to start research with sources. Let's go to uh, the week eight, I have to assign them uh, first draft. In week nine, I have to provide uh, opportunity for the uh, group work uh, support. So uh, people in groups can support each other if they chose the same format. And they can also ask questions. I will uh, make sure that there's time uh, for me to be present during the uh, online course so they can ask me questions. So I um, um, explain everything to the student uh, and I also explain everything to, to instructor. This is what instructor will have to do. And I also indicated when do I have to grade and uh, what, uh, what needs to be done at which point. Uh, so right here, I have to grade the bibliography, I have to grade the reflection, I have to grade the final project, and when I'm going to be uh, working on that, I, 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 I assign that as well. So personally, I find it to be very, very useful in order to manage this kind of differentiated, uh, more complex uh, project. So moving on to um, the next, uh, let's see how we went uh, further about this. So as you see in module, um, we continue going through this project and this will assign, uh, assign the topic. Uh, here we um, assign um, the next part and the next part. And we continue working on this. I uh, allocated some of this, um, you know, I put some of this assignment through this demo course. So you can just briefly take a look. So I explained what they need to do for this particular component. Is it graded, not graded? How is going to be graded? There's a rubric for each uh, component that is graded and things like that. So you schedule all of that and place all of that in advance. So it's um, equally equally distributed throughout the, um, throughout the uh, semester. I'm not gonna go through each. Um, component of the project here because uh, none of you will be required to complete it so we're going to skip that what i want to talk about next is about how to um, how to actually uh, continue promoting and integrating this differentiation um, how can i manage this differentiation people ask me how you grade such a variety of um product if they selected uh, somebody selected presentation and somebody selected uh, uh, somebody selected um, you know PowerPoint and somebody selected uh, video how are you gonna go about grading it and uh, the solution is because we separated all the components of the project you don't grade one huge project at the end of semester and got completely overwhelmed instead you uh, grade different portions and some portions would be um, similar in format, like for example, they uh, they worked on research, and I um, graded that portion. Uh, you know, um, it doesn't have to be completed, but I graded the research uh, component of this project separately. I just wanted to make sure that they used a proper uh, 
resources, that they used uh, enough um, uh, articles, uh, what, the con what the content they included and why did they follow my directions and things like that. So I'm going to um, uh, uh, grade that separately by the rubric that would up be applicable to, to all. The next portion is field research. That would be very different for everybody because they all chose different topics and they work in different districts and they work in different uh, areas. So their field research would, would be different. And uh, I'm going to uh, look at that as a separate component. And finally, we come to the final, um, final component of this project is uh, creating, uh, creating the final product. And um, this is, uh, this is the trick I, I, I really enjoyed uh, that solved a lot of problems with this. I uh, give, gave them opportunity to select um, groups by um, format. So for example, if uh, uh, students chose to create their final project as, a <clears throat> as developing a series of video clips, they have their own group because they would uh, let me know what format they chose cho choosing and I'm gonna set up the groups. Uh, everybody who decided to uh, develop a webinar gonna have their own group because they might be using tools that are completely not relevant, relevant to um, a group that decided to do a live presentation to the parents. So uh, we, we uh, using, they're using different groups, they're using different format and I create uh, groups in the course, so groups by format, so they actually can uh, get together and support each other and talk about the process of developing their final uh, product. Let's, uh, let me show you in peoples, you go to people to create the groups. And this is my uh, groups by format. I mean, obviously it's empty course. I don't have real students here, but uh, this is how you will uh, do um, presentation and pamphlet would be one group. We have recorded webinar, we have series of video clips. We have traditional research paper. If students uh, chose to do that, you can support them in this group, providing them uh, structure and resources for that. So you can kind of support separate groups for different type of uh, developing different type of um, uh, final final uh, project uh, product of the course. And as you see, there's uh, so many opportunities for for differentiation and great part about it that uh, they also can support each other as they coming to the end of the course and coming through uh, to the end of the developing this kind of project they supporting each other and uh, giving each other you know answering each other question or oh, i used for example screenomatic to um, you know the record the screen as i was explaining uh, this concept. Uh, how did you use it? Where did you get it? Is it free? Can I use it? Give me a link. So all of those kind of things can be resolved in, in group and uh, very relevant to people who are working on that particular type of project, but it's not relevant to other group. And, and this is how you would uh, go ahead and set up this uh, project and manage it using groups and managing it by separating into smaller portions where you can uh, not only grade them, but also provide students with your feedback, uh, with your, uh, you know, you can um, get your formative assessment done to see where the students in the process, do they understand the concepts, do they actually take what I'm teaching them in my lectures and uh, from the textbook and resources I offer them, do they actually take that into consideration, do they integrate that into their final work, is it uh, relevant to them? So you can actually judge how people are uh, learning and you also can provide support. If you see that somebody did not submit your first draft, uh, you can nudge them. If somebody, uh, uh, if somebody didn't show up uh, for, you know, did not provide the peer review uh, for the, for the um, research part, you can, um, you know, you can get in touch with them and, and, and see what's going on. And, and is there anything you can do to help them to reach the learning objective and uh, complete this uh, portion of the project? So this is just an example, and I hope that you can um, you can uh, see the uh, the usefulness of this approach, and you can uh, incorporate it into into your work. Meanwhile, let me go back to my presentation, and uh, I think the next part is I wanna. I want to ask you questions. What do you think? Is it uh, useful to you? Any thoughts you would like to share? Do you see uh, either as you teach or helping other instructors to uh, to work through more uh, differentiated and more complex projects throughout the course? Uh, would you uh, 
like to use the timeline tool? Would you like to um, suggest uh, um, grouping people, grouping students uh, by format or anything like that? Any thoughts? I would appreciate your feedback, your comments, your thinking. Um, nothing yet, but I'm thinking people typing, I'm hoping. So I'll give it a minute. And I did want to share, uh, use pre-course surveys to learn about students. Yes, absolutely. That will help. Absolutely. Thank you, Karen. And uh, let me see if I can share that. Um, I'm going to share my handout with you guys as soon as I put it in. Uh, What kind of feedback do you get from your students about the format? Well, uh, students were very happy with two things. Number one, that they had so many choices, uh, not only uh, with topic, but also with, um, uh, with format and audiences, because some of them uh, wanted to work with parents, some of them wanted to work with uh, students, some of them wanted to work with uh, creating professional development. So <coughs> they appreciate that freedom. And so at the end, uh, the final product was very relevant to their work. They actually work on that throughout the semester. And then they took that and actually went uh, could bring it to their uh, workplace. So they like that opportunity. And they also like how uh, structured this uh, project was uh, and they uh, could see what's coming, when it's coming. Uh, there was a lot of um, uh, support provided throughout the course, uh, staying focused on the project. So it felt like they're doing small assignments and it didn't feel like, uh, okay, this is the second part of the semester. Now we have to jump on this uh, huge project. And by the end, everybody's overwhelmed, including instructor who had to, uh, uh, um, who has to grade all of the uh, project at once. So uh, yes, I did get, um, you know, positive, feedback from people some difficulties people had with technology but again working in, in small groups uh helped because uh, not only i had to stay on top of the, uh, the tools but also they could help each other if they selected similar format uh they could help each other uh, and give each other suggestion and advice uh, now I'm, i am uh, desperately trying to share my um outline with you my um uh, handout and I want you to think about your courses or um, about courses that you are helping to set up for your instructors is uh, how you can incorporate some of that how you can choose to uh, how you can differentiate instruction uh, by creating um, authentic assessment by creating authentic assignments uh, for the courses so please think please share and keep in mind those components of the I which is content process, product, affect, and learning environment. Uh, so let me see if I uh, can um, open up this if, and attach it so you have uh, access to that. Let me give me just one second while you're thinking. Please continue thinking and sharing. And this is what I want to share with you. So I have to save it into I'm going to continue working on that and we'll make it available in chat. And I believe that this is references for this presentation and this is contact. Um, this is my name, uh, my uh, email. Feel, feel free to reach out if you need any more information. I would like to just uh, discuss uh, opportunities of developing outending uh, assignments. I will welcome any collaboration. And also, this is website of uh, our department, Teaching and Learning with Technology. We have a wonderful team, so feel free to take a look at our resources and um, connect to us. And I believe we come to the point of asking questions. So if any questions here, uh, please feel free to ask, feel free to chat. You can put your hand up, I can put you 
uh, to, so you can speak or um, you can uh, put your question or thoughts in the chat. Let's see. Any recommendation for how peer instruction might fit into differentiated instruction? Well, <clears throat> again, depending on what uh, students will choose, what kind of topic they cho choosing, and how they can decide to work together. If they uh, chose to work together uh, at, at the beginning, you can uh, provide them with this opportunity by putting them, them, uh, them, them to group. And also in this particular project, I have a component where um, uh, people um, provide peer review for a paper for the theoretical part of the project where they did research. They had to provide a peer review and help each other with research. I gave them checklist um, and you can always offer them checklist or uh, rubrics so you can focus their peer review, not just ask them to you know, evaluate and offer any suggestion, but be specific, um, give them a checklist uh, explaining that what to look for, for example, is thesis really uh, reflects what was discussed in the paper. Can, is it easy to navigate and follow the paper? Did they use appropriate number and quality of the resources? Things like that. And my favorite uh, always include, uh, did they, uh, you know, did they really follow all the guidelines for APA? This way, when you have to grade it, you don't have to go through all the uh, references and comma and, and be so careful about it and uh, spend a lot of time just correcting those small errors. And instead, students will help each other to to already um, correct those kind of errors and you will have an opportunity to really focus on the content and see how students um, create it, um, you know, how they really apply the content you're teaching in the course into the final uh, project. So I am still uh, going to um, collect and if you have any other comments, you can please feel free to um, share. I have another comment from Kate. Uh, whenever we include something like this in class, our students love it, particularly with online and, uh, and adult uh, learners. They love this opportunity to really get to work and to choose the topic that's meaningful to them. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the main um, principles of, of adult learning. We don't learn just because we have to. We really learn what is making sense to us at the moment. It's meaningful. It's relevant. And, and that's kind of a project provide those opportunities for learning. The, the key is to help them understand the skills and knowledge they will develop and why it will help them in the real world. They, um, then they get really invested in it. Yes, yes, uh, Kate, thank you, wonderful comment. I cannot agree more with you. We're speaking the same language here. Uh, Dina loves the time document, so helpful for managing the complex course components and scaffolding project. Yes, and I, and I really um, invite you to create two timelines, one for you and one for students. So you know when you need to grade, when you need to assign, when you need to explain, and when you need to put groups together. It's really helped me a lot to have my own little uh, timeline going along with the student's timeline. Um, okay, very good. So what do I need to do to attach this so you guys can, um, okay, I can put it in, in my Google Drive and then I can attach here. Okay, so let me try that. Uh, feel free to um, ask questions, uh, and I hope you enjoy this presentation. I hope you find some uh, elements uh, that you can use. And please continue thinking about uh, incorporating uh, universal design for learning and differentiated instructions to really um, make learning meaningful uh, for all students in your classroom, regardless regardless of the diverse characteristic. And thank you very much. I will attach my handout, which you see right here in just a moment. Okay, that handout is great. Uh, this handout includes a project timeline, for you and for, you know, you can make it into for you and for students. This is just one for instructor and for students. And uh, uh, the components of DI with students, uh, student-centered uh, approach, just to remind you how to go about that. So let me now include. And again, thank you so much, everybody, for.
stopping by and for spending your afternoon with us. I'm going to stop share for right now. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, everybody. Well, I think we're almost done once the three people left. I have a hard time making that um, uh, file to connect. I can, I can uh, make it available if anybody wants to reach out to me. I can be happy to, uh, I'm not able to get, yes, I can send email. All right. Um, let me just put my email and people can connect to me and I'll be happy to send it. Okay, thank you so much. I'm gonna say goodbye for right now and I appreciate uh, your time. Bye now. <laughs>